This anime is boring and that's the best thing about it. Seasonal anime are a dime a dozen. The industry hits us with a barrage of unremarkable projects every three months and trust me, I would know. As such, when you come across a show literally called Days With My Stepsister, it's entirely within your rights to disregard it. However, if you do, you'll miss out on one of the best shows of the year that's not hyperbole. Days With My Stepsister or Gimai Seikatsu is not what you think it is, if that wasn't obvious already. Also, I'll stop pretending like I discovered this anime while browsing the seasonal charts. I had read the light novel a while back and I was looking forward to the anime. In fact, I shelled the anime even before it started airing. So what is it about? Well, let's talk about it. Make sure to subscribe. If I had to summarize this show into a single word, I'd go with realistic. Yes, the rom-com about two people suddenly becoming step-siblings and living under the same roof is realistic. It is, trust me. Days With My Stepsister values realism over all else. In a way, it's the ultimate clickbait. It presents a fictional setting filled with fictional people in as realistic of a manner as possible. Neither is it an Eromanga sensei or as I like to call it, how is this allowed on television, the anime? Nor is it a domestic girlfriend or as I like to call it, peak fiction. It's basically a mundane drama. And that might sound boring, but oh boy, let me tell you. It is. It is boring in the sense that nothing out of the ordinary happens outside of the initial premise. Even slice of life shows tend to have over the top personalities and snappy dialogue, but that's not the case here. Everything in this show is truly ordinary. And that's what makes this show so special. Of course, not all of the credit should go to the writing. Presenting such a subtle concept through a medium as over the top and in your face as anime isn't possible without top notch direction. And that's exactly what it got. More about the subject in a second. Days With My Stepsister is a drama centered around a tiny cast of characters. And since nothing else happens plot-wise, these characters need to stand out. And oh boy, they don't. At least not in the traditional sense. They are very well written but not over the top whatsoever. Let's talk about them as they are the story. The male lead Yuta Samura and the female lead Saki Ayase are both similar and very different at the same time. Which to be fair is a phrase every single single review ever seems to use, but it's true. Both of them saw their families fall apart at a young age, and both of them came to the same conclusion. This conclusion would then become the crux of both of their characters. They decided that expectations led to conflict. People expect others to act a certain way or do certain things. They saw this as unreasonable and decided to live their lives in a manner in which people won't expect anything from them. And this is where the two differ. Yuta preferred being ordinary, someone who hung around in the background, someone unremarkable, basically you, while Saki went the opposite route and cut people off. She refused to let people decide what they expected from her. The two upon meeting each other realized that they were similar and therefore started to get along. They decided not to expect anything from each other and remember that it will be significant later on. And that's the story. The two leads slowly dropping their guards, opening up to one another and influencing each other's lives. Now, translating all of that into an anime is a Herculean task. A lot of what I talked about needed to be established in the very first episode. The direction had to be focused and meaningful and thankfully, it was and still is. The show is directed by Sota Ueno and given how phenomenal his work is, he must be a well-known industry veteran, right? Wrong. This is in fact his debut project. He has only been in the industry for like 7 years. On top of that, this series has almost nothing to offer in terms of actual animation. Movement is rare and frequently broken. But somehow, Ueno made it work. He managed to translate the subtle, nuanced writing of the novel into an anime with next to no resources. Sota Ueno is a genius. He clearly understands the source material and its appeal and presents it with surgical precision. I won't go over every single episode, however, I think I should talk about the first episode in relative detail. The show lets us know right off the bat that it's different. The vibrant poster featuring a stereotypical incest bait anime exits the screen, leaving our protagonist and the monochrome world in its wake. It's not even remotely subtle, it's one step away from the character breaking the fourth wall, looking directly at the camera and going, we are not like those other shows, we promise. It's extremely on the nose, but it's necessary. The show is different and people need to know that. The direction is incredible throughout, it lets the story breathe. With 
with a slow pace, long lingering shots, clever sound design and brilliant visual storytelling. The first episode had two major themes, change and unfamiliarity. The existing lifestyle of Yuta and his dad was about to change and the anime made that evident. Yuta's dad is an impulsive guy, we know that because of the way he abruptly announces the fact that he was getting remarried or the reason as to why he decided to remarry in the first place. Even something as simple as him reaching for his food while it's still too hot is a sign. All of this tells us that he is spontaneous and easily swayed, while Yuta is the calm one, the anchor if you will. Also, them eating microwaved instant meals for breakfast seems to suggest that neither of the two can or want to cook. Subtle bits of visual storytelling like this makes the show, and you need to pay attention to this stuff if you want to fully appreciate the work. The anime uses cold colors during this section and later uses warmer shades to signify the change brought about by Saki and her mother. At one point, Yuta is caught off guard when he sees the lights turned on when he comes home. Usually, he'd be alone at that hour. We can see how these two are starting to influence each other. The show also uses the same layouts repeatedly at different points in time, highlighting the aforementioned change. I'm sure it helped the production team as well. They could reuse the same layouts multiple times. It's such a brilliant adaptation. The other important theme was unfamiliarity. Saki, someone who had closed herself off, was effectively forced to live with strangers. Of course, she'd be awkward and uptight. And the anime conveyed that perfectly. The amount of visual storytelling in the first episode was off the charts. These strains signify two opposite paths crossing. These stickers represent the old memories Yuta had made in that house. And Saki trying to figure out the light switches was simply relatable. I believe all of those things were anime-only additions. And this is what the show is all about. The mundane, the everyday actions, and the subtle feelings of each character. Once this groundwork was established, the real story began. The dynamic between the two leads is fascinating and constantly changing. Like I said, they decided not to expect anything from each other. Even when Yuta heard about Saki engaging in unsavory activities, not today, demonetization bot. When he heard that, he didn't take the moral high ground and interfere in her life. In fact, the only time he did that was was when she nearly died in a traffic accident. The anime complements this idea. In episode 2, the characters get dressed before going downstairs, refusing to let the others see them in a clumsy state. This dynamic is the main highlight. It's what the show is all about. The cast is small, so every little thing matters. A fascinating thing about this show is the fact that the story is told through two points of view. Instead of us being the omnipresent third person observing the plot from above, we are fed information in the same manner as the character whose point of view we are following. Most of the story is told through Yuta's perspective, and we aren't told anything he doesn't know. Information is withheld from us. For example, Saki nearly got into an accident in episode 2, but we never really saw why. Because again, the episode was told from Yuta's POV. The perspective switched in the third episode during the diary segment, and we were finally allowed to learn what happened. Saki was distracted by a butterfly and we saw this butterfly in the second episode. We just didn't know why. Did I mention Sota Ueno is a genius? Sota Ueno is a genius. This point of view based storytelling is so novel. Events and feelings of other characters are often left unclear and we are told the complete story when the perspective changes. And this feeling of watching all the pieces fall together is cathartic. It's such a creative way of presenting a story, props to everyone involved. As the days go by, the relationship between the leads evolve, leading to several noteworthy moments. The show has no fan service, however, it does feature a suggestive moment. However, there's nothing fun about it. It's uncomfortable and it's deeply meaningful. Saki offers herself to Yuta, but the only reason why she does that is because she expects Yuta to move on from it without tearing the family apart or ruining their current relationship, regardless of whether or not he accepts. But did you catch that? She expects Yuta to do that. And remember what I said about these two and expectations. By expecting something from Yuta, Saki went against one of her and Yuta's core values. This is, for lack of a better term, a deep narrative, in case it wasn't obvious already. I won't go through the story beat by beat, just watch it yourself. Their dynamic continues to evolve and currently, Saki has come to the conclusion that she was jealous, a far cry from their initial naive promise to each other. The show has very 
few side characters. There's Maya Narasaka, the most rom-com-like character from the show. She has a over-the-top bubbly personality highlighted by her bright red hair. She usually injects some joy and comedy into the show. Then there's Shiori, another character burdened by expectations. Her appearance in the novel is compared to Yamato Nadeshiko, an antiquated term referring to the ideal Japanese beauty, someone who is modest, beautiful, and dignified. Of course, her own personality is completely different from it. Despite that, our Mr. No Expectations hair treats her normally, which is probably why she gets along with and possibly likes him. Basically, small cast or not, there is a lot going on, and the anime gets all of those ideas across perfectly and adds a few of its own. The direction is consistently mind-blowing. The aforementioned diary scenes even in a vacuum look really cool. They are presented in a disjointed fashion similar to an actual diary. The short compositions slash storyboards are usually long and lingering, with camera placements that feel realistic. This of course adds to the casual, everyday-like vibe of the show. Episode 4 features a proper lo-fi music video in the middle of it, which was really fun to watch. The backgrounds and the colors were gorgeous. Episode 5 had the movie, a departure from the usual look of the show. Episode 7 had another long diary segment, adding additional context to the events of the previous episode. The use of the aquarium slash water to symbolize Saki's suppressed feelings was a nice touch, although it's not exactly unique. Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 did something similar with the underwater imagery surrounding Riko. Every episode means something. I won't go through everything, this isn't a plot summary. However, I will say this, it truly is one of the most uniquely written works from the genre and one of the most well-directed shows in recent memory. It's a gold standard as far as anime adaptations go. If it wasn't clear already, I am urging you guys to give it a shot. It's incredible. That's about it. Liked the video? Check out this other bit of content on screen. Like and subscribe and until next time.